This is a General Electric set, but the chassis is labeled a CTC-157. And this set, the CRT, is extremely weak in it. I'm going to EOL this set tonight for the debates, and we're going to do a little bit different type of an EOL. Now for this set, the tuner is completely dead, so I've had to bring the DirecTV box out here so that I can use the composite input. And what I've done, the way we're going to EOL this is we're going to essentially crank the, the filament voltage up until the filament fails. But I get a lot of questions what a brightener does, so you'll get to see it tonight. This is the filament supply wire from the flyback. And what I've done is I've attached a separate wire here. And I've come back here to a 24 volt transformer with a meter on it. And then that's coming to a variac here. I'm going to use three cameras for this EOL. I'm going to use the main camera on the screen. I'm going to set manual exposure so you'll be able to see the, the camera's AGC won't drop the brightness down as the picture gets brighter. I'm going to use a second camera pointed at the filaments on the back so we can see how bright they are. And I'm going to use a third camera on the actual voltage and we'll put it all together we'll see how it looks peeled and replaced secretary clinton let me follow up with you your husband called obamacare quote the craziest thing in the world saying that small business owners are getting killed as premiums double coverage is cut in half was he mistaken or was his mistake simply telling the truth no i mean he clarified what he meant and, and it's very clear look we are in a situation in our country where if we were to start all over again we might come up with a different system. But we have an employer-based system. That's where the vast majority of people get their health care. And the Affordable Care Act was meant to try to fill the gap between people who were too poor and couldn't put together any resources to afford health care, namely people on Medicaid. Obviously, Medicare, which is a single-payer system, which takes care of our elderly and does a great job doing it, by the way, and then all the people who were employed, but people who were working but didn't have the money to afford insurance and didn't have anybody, an employer or anybody else, to help them. That was the, the slot that the Obamacare uh, approach was to take. And like I say, 20 million people now have health insurance. So if we just rip it up and throw it away, what Donald's not telling you is, we just turn it back to the insurance companies the way it used to be. And that means the insurance companies get to do pretty much whatever they want, including saying, look, I'm sorry, you've got diabetes, you had cancer, your child has asthma, your time is up. you may not be able to have insurance because you can't afford it. So let's fix what's broken about it, but let's not throw it away and give it all back to the insurance companies. Mr. And let the me follow companies. up with you, Mr. That's not going to work. Mr. Trump, let me follow up uh, well, on I this. I just wanted just one thing. First of all, Hillary, everything's broken about it, everything. Number two. Bernie Sanders said that Hillary Clinton has very bad judgment. This is a perfect example of it, Mr. trying Trump, to save Obamacare, which is... You've said serious. you want to end By Obamacare. Way, you've said you want to end Obamacare. You've also said you want to make coverage accessible for people with pre-existing conditions. How do you force insurance companies to do that if you're no longer mandating that every American get insurance? Able to. You're going to have plans. What, what does that mean? That, well, I'll tell you what it means. You're going to have plans that are so good because we're going to have so much competition in the insurance industry once we break out once we break out the lines and allow the competition to come are you, obama, are you going to have a mandate that americans Anderson, have to have health insurance me. president obama by keeping those lines the boundary lines around each state and it was almost gone until just very toward the end of the passage of obamacare which by the way was a fraud you know that because jonathan gruber the architect of obamacare was said he said it was a great lie, it was a big lie. President Obama said you keep your doctor, you keep your plan. The whole thing was a fraud, and it doesn't work. But when we get rid of those lines, you will have competition, and we will be able to keep pre-existing. We'll also be able to help people that can't get, don't have money, because we are going to have people protected. And Republicans feel this way, believe it or not, and strongly this way, we're gonna block grant into the states. We're going to block grant into Med Medicaid into you, the Mr. states Trump. so that we will be able to take care of people without the necessary funds to take care of themselves. Thank you, Mr. Trump. We now go to Gorba Hamid with a question for both candidates. Hi. There are 3.3 million Muslims in the United States, and I'm one of them. 
You've mentioned working with Muslim nations, but with Islamophobia on the rise, how will you help people like me deal with the consequences of being labeled as a threat to the country after the election is over? Mr. Trump, you're first. Well, you're right about Islamophobia, and that's a shame. But one thing we have to do is we have to make sure that, because there is a problem. I mean, whether we like it or not, and we can be very politically correct, but whether we like it or not, there is a problem. And we have to be sure that Muslims come in and report when they see something going on. When they see hatred going on, they have to report it. As an example, in San Bernardino, many people saw the bombs all over the apartment of the two people that killed 14 and wounded many, many people horribly wounded. They'll never be the same. Muslims have to report the problems when they see them. And, you know, there's, a, there's always a reason for everything. If they don't do that, it's a very difficult situation for our country. Because you look at Orlando, and you look at San Bernardino, and you look at the World Trade Center, go outside, you look at Paris, look at that horrible, these are radical Islamic terrorists. And she won't even mention the word, and nor will President Obama. He won't use the term radical Islamic terrorism. Now, to solve a problem, you have to be able to state what the problem is, or at least say the name. She won't say the name, and President Obama won't say the name, but the name is there. It's radical Islamic terror. And before you solve it, you have to say the name. Secretary Clinton. Well, thank you for asking your question. And I've heard this question from a lot of Muslim Americans across our country. Because, unfortunately, there's been a lot of very divisive, dark things said about Muslims. And even someone like Captain Khan, the young man who sacrificed himself defending our country in the United States Army, has been subject to attack by Donald. I want to say just a couple of things. First, we've had Muslims in America since George Washington. And we've had many successful Muslims. We just lost a particularly well-known one with Muhammad Ali. My vision of America is an America where everyone has a place. If you're willing to work hard, you do your part, you contribute to the community, that's what America is. That's what we want America to be for our children and our grandchildren. It's also very short-sighted and even dangerous to be engaging in the kind of demagogic rhetoric that Donald has about Muslims. We need American Muslims to be part of our eyes and ears on our front lines. I've worked with a lot of different Muslim groups around America. I've met with a lot of them for them to feel that they are wanted and included and part of our country, part of our homeland security, and that's what I want to see. It's also important, I intend to defeat ISIS, to do so in a coalition with majority Muslim nations. Right now, a lot of those nations are hearing what Donald says and wondering, why should we cooperate with the Americans and, and the terrorists?